sometimes you know right from the start that a ride is going to be tough and it might not go according to plan. Oh, <laughs> oh goodness sakes! <laughs> My friend Will has disappeared. This is what I came to look for. You can almost feel the history seeping out of the ground in this glen. I love it here. Now, I've never come across this before. That chain is solid. There's actually no way to open that link. There's not even a padlock on it. This is going to be one of those rides. This is Kentra Bay on Ardnemurchen. I'm starting on a track that is popular with visitors. Now you see that sign? That gives a clue to where we're going. That faded out word, that word is Ockel. I know it's a rough track to Ockel, but I'm going further, trying to make a complete loop, most of it off-road. And the only reason I'm attempting what I'm trying is because I had an email from someone who lives out this way who says, did you know about the new road? The first section of my ride takes me along the north coast, which I've ridden before. I've also done part of the third section that cuts back across the peninsula. It's that gap I need to fill. Looking on Kamut's maps and satellite, there doesn't seem to be any link, but switch to Google satellite and the new secret road appears. That has allowed me to plot an off-grid section and turn this into a loop. So that's the route I'm attempting today. If you broke it down into three sections, then I've done two of them previously, but I've done them as separate rides. So trying to do all three together, and including that new section that I've got no idea what it's like, well, that's why I say this is such a tough ride. First, a short side trip to one of the best beaches around here, the so-called Singing Sands. The sands are so cold because the noise of the sea washing on their grains is meant to sound a little bit like the sand singing. These beaches were used to practice the D-Day landings and an awful lot of munitions were fired around here. And every now and again, a shell washes up on the beach and it's not a natural shell, it's one of the sort that goes boom. Right, well that was the easy bit. Now it really does get tough. I think I should take this jacket off, don't you? Don't know about you, but I find the sizing of cycling kit to be ridiculously inconsistent. On things like Castelli, La Passione, I'm a large, sometimes extra large. So when I got this Altura jacket, I thought, well, I'll get a large. But as it is, it's a little bit big and flappy. It's fine with a rucksack on. And I put it on this morning because I wanted a little bit of extra warmth. And having extra warm clothing is something you don't leave home and do some adventure cycling without. Along with a personal locator beacon. If you have a spot, they're even better. Along with my little first aid kit, a reusable plasticized foil bivy bag, and lots of food that should keep me going. Hopefully, I won't need any of it. But the point is, you never know. You can almost feel the history seeping out of the ground in this glen. I love it here. Because you've got to think of Arden American as a long finger sticking out into the sea. The modern road runs along the south side, and there are plenty of communities there who would have been connected, but with more harbour opportunities, they'd have probably been connected by sea. Along here, there's some serious cliffs. So this, 
I would go so far as to venture this could well have been the main road down Ardner Machen. I was going to say I'm not a huge believer in too much uh, woo woo, but actually, when you're here, you feel as if you can touch some rock and, and feel <laughs> that people who have passed by. Ah, that probably sounds ridiculous. Forget. Well, I really cocked up this morning when I was putting together my kit last night and put everything in the car. I did check the Garmin was fully charged and somehow I must not have switched it off again because 0% in the battery when I came to start this ride. So I'm recording it on my watch, which is probably going to run out of battery power before we get to the end. And for mapping, well, I know most of the bits I've done, obviously. The new section, I think once I'm on it, it should be straightforward. But I've got my phone, and I'll pull that out if and when necessary. But it goes to show, it's so easy to make that kind of mistake. I'm not sure how solid that's going to be. Oh, no. <laughs> yep, that was my answer. Not at all. Oops. Jesus. In a recent video where I tried to follow the route of a mountain bike race and <laughs> had a few problems, uh, somebody in a comment said he really took a knife to a gunfight. Oh. <laughs> that was a bit of a fall that I wasn't expecting. Well, who does expect a fall, really? That was because I'm trying to eat the last bit of value out of my shoes, and really, they are falling apart. I wonder if Timson's could fix these. It seems a shame to put them in the bin when most of them are fine. But it's just that heel that's given away. just over seven miles into a 30 mile ride and already three hours and 20 has ticked by. Now partly that's because of the filming, partly it's just because I'm slow, but a lot of that has to do with this terrain. This is Swaddle Bay and by any standards people look at that and think, oh how tranquil, how remote. Almost 6,000 years ago, 3,700 BC, there were people living down there. This was a very busy place. And then later, there were 90 people lived here. There was three separate communities here. And gradually they were cleared out in the 1870s. Some moved just further down the peninsula, but others moved much further afield to Glasgow and of course to the New World. It's so easy to forget the history that lies behind these places. So easy. There is still some tarmac riding. I haven't been able to eliminate it altogether. But whereas when I've done this ride in the past, I've actually used tarmac to go pretty much all the way back to the car. Now, there does seem to be an alternative. This is now completely new territory for me. Fascinated to see where I end up. The answer is a timber factory. It's easy to question the environmental consequences of this on a small island. But the industry is worth £285 million to Scotland's economy and employs about 30,000 people. Even more indirectly, when contractors stay in hotels and B&Bs across the off-season. I'm doing this ride on a Sunday precisely because there's less chance of places like that being open and also the sawmill that I think this new road was put in to service. Well, this is all right for a secret road, isn't it? I'm indebted to Alistair who told me it existed. I'm approaching an area where there is an access controversy. It has been big news with the landowner arguing a route is not a long-standing right-of-way. That argument is heading to court. But I wasn't expecting this. Do we have a way through here? 
Now I've never come across this before. That chain is solid. There's actually no way to open that link. There's not even a padlock on it. Look, right the way around. How weird is that? So I'm gonna have to climb a fence. Funded through the Rural Development Fund. Not one gate, but two. The local access officer has since told me the adjacent split links can be aligned to break the chain open, but I've never seen this before. My trick is to hold it as low as I can, and get the handlebars over the top, and then gradually lower it. Always near the hinge of the gate so it's safer, and then take that down. This is what I came to look for. A very small fishing buffet. Recent renovations by, and I love this, the Summer Wine Angling Club, discovered evidence that this had been made before 1879, roughly around the time those 90 people were cleared from Swaddle Bay. Right, 40 kilometers in six hours and 25 minutes. That tells you something about the terrain I've been going through here. I'm really pleased I made it to the fishing bothy though, because this is really cool. That was a side trip. It's a fast return to the main track, then a long, long push through some wet ground. I saw that the Vielo V plus one bike was second in Road CC's gravel bike of the year. Second to the Giant, which actually got the bike of the year. It was in good competition considering how many gravel bikes there are. And I often think about this bike, whether it would have liked to have ended up somewhere nice and warm in California or something, tearing up the, the real gravel roads. And here the poor thing is in soaking wet Scotland, getting pushed, carried, filthy every time I take it out and it does creak a bit I get to thinking that's the Vielo complaining oh no what have I done to deserve this life oh for goodness sakes <laughs> oh my word my friend Will has disappeared go under there. Pretty much the first thing I said was this ride is going to be hard. What I hadn't realized at the time was that the ride was also going to be fairly rubbish too. <laughs> the ratio of pushing and hiker bike to, uh, to the riding, oh that was just way too high. If you like this type of adventure cycling then it would be fantastic if you subscribe, click the round button and you could try this video next because I, I think you'll like it. Let me know in the comments whether or not I'm right and I'll see you again next time. Bye.